Bird strikes into the jet engines of two separate aircraft yesterday led to two very different outcomes. Um, I was tagged in several of the posts that was made all over social media and people were asking me, so why did these pilots do two you know, so different things with basically the same failure? The first video that we're going to have a look at is an Aeromexico Boeing 787 that tried to take off out of Cancun yesterday uh, and hit a bird and decided to reject the takeoff. The second one is a spotter video of a, um, a DHL Airbus A300 that took off out of uh, Amsterdam and they continued the takeoff and actually continued to their destination. So how come that if you have a failure that looks exactly the same, you can have two different outcomes and they're both correct? That's what we're gonna have a look at now. Okay guys, so let's have a look at this. The first video that we're going to watch is the Boeing 787 who rejected the takeoff in Cancun. Now this video I actually got sent to me by one of the passengers, the one that sat next to the guys who actually filmed this. And the reason I got this video was because uh, one of you guys, Jesus Zamora, uh, actually got me in contact with this passenger. So it is, I really appreciate when you guys do those kind of things. So let's have a look now. So the video is taken from just behind the left-hand wing. Um, we see these gorgeous 787 huge windows and they are just accelerating down the runway. Um, they seem to be quite heavy because they're accelerating quite slowly. So let's see what happens here. Up, oh, there we go. So quite big flames. You can see that the spoilers went up on the wings and here you see that the, uh, the passengers are bracing because of you know, the force of the uh, deceleration. Now, rejected takeoff is, is a very kind of brutal experience, right? We have a rejected takeoff setting on our auto brake system. I'm guessing they have the same on the 787 and it will apply the brakes fully to make sure that we stop in the shortest available distance. So that, that would have been a very interesting experience to say the least. Okay, so, so you know, Seeing this video, you can see, clearly see that something happened to the left-hand engine and the pilots reacted lightning fast, but they decided to reject the takeoff. So now let's have a look at the second video that was sent to me. This video uh, was taken by a, uh, a YouTuber called Pilot Sander HD. There's a link to his video down here. I want to go and check out the full version of it later on. So this is in Amsterdam. We can see this good-looking Airbus A300 lining up for uh, takeoff. Everything looks perfectly normal. It's starting to this to to accelerate down the runway. And there we can see that there actually are some birds around here. It's rotating and there we go, there we go. So a very similar failure, but obviously this followed by a takeoff and this, this aircraft actually continued to the destination, which was Leipzig in, uh, in Germany. Okay, so we have two very similar problems leading to two very different outcomes, both of them absolutely correct and I'll explain to you why. But before I do that, I just want to talk about the, the, the kind of failure that we're seeing, right? Those flames that comes out of the engine. Now those flames does not indicate neither the size of the bird, which I actually got a question about, nor the damage of the engine. Now what you're actually seeing is what we call an engine surge, okay? I've done a separate video about engine surges. You can have a look at that afterwards up here. Um, but what it indicates is that the bird that was sucked into the engine did not go into what we call the bypass duct. That's the, you know, the side of the engines that, you know, most of the air that goes through a jet engine actually goes through the bypass duct and becomes part of the, the bypass air. No, these engines were sucked into the core of the engine. So they went into the engine compressor and as they did, they probably obstructed the airflow a little bit, which led to a partial stall inside of the, uh, the engine compressor. And that stall then led to 
slightly higher accumulation of fuel that got torched and led to these relatively big flames that were coming out and we could see on both of these takeoff. Now that doesn't mean that these engines were actually damaged. They could have been. The reason that you saw the Boeing 787 reject the takeoff does not have to do with the failure as such, it has to do with the speed at which it happened. So when we are in the takeoff role, we define the takeoff role into two different segments. We have what we call the high speed regime and the low speed regime. Now the low speed regime is everything that happens up until we pass 80 knots. And this is in a 737, I'm guessing it's very similar on the 787 and in the Airbus. So prior to 80 knots, the, the aircraft doesn't have much energy, right? It hasn't gone very far down the runway, which means that at that point, if we decide to reject the takeoff, we have plenty of runway ahead of us and we don't need to decelerate that much. So it's considered a fairly low risk thing to do a rejected takeoff at that point. And because of that, we teach our pilots that in the low speed regime, you can reject the takeoff for basically anything. Any warning that comes on, uh, uh, an engine surge like this, a burst tire, um, you know, noise, a little bit of, of, of vibration, so the cockpit window opening, basically anything that makes you feel uncomfortable is caused to reject the takeoff in the low speed regime. Now, once you have past 80 knots, and this is one of the reasons why the pilot monitoring calls 80 knots, and you get a check, that's because now we both know that we're in the high speed regime and it's also a, a pilot incapacitation check. Uh, once we're in the high speed regime, we basically only reject the takeoff for three different reasons. We reject for engine failure, engine fire, or the aircraft is unsafe or unable to fly, okay? In this case, an engine surge is not an engine failure. It's just a temporary kind of cough of the engine. It loses a little bit of, of thrust for a fraction of a second, but then it comes back again. So providing that the engine continues to work, which it did in the case of the DHL here, we just continue the takeoff. We rotate where we're supposed to, we get the aircraft airborne, the pilot flying concentrates on flying the aircraft, get up to about 400 feet minimum above ground, and after that, that's when we start looking into whether or not we have a failure on the engine. So the pilot monitoring is gonna start going through the engine instrumentation, and if, you know, if they don't see anything, if the engine is rotating normally, there's no indication of any strange vibration or loss of thrust, or do you get any smoke in the cockpit or anything like that? Well, in that case, you can actually choose to just continue the takeoff as normal, all right? And it's perfectly okay to then continue to your destination as planned. But if you do a, a check at that altitude and you do find something weird, maybe the, uh, the engine continues to surge, for example, indicating that there's actually some damage inside of the compressor stage, or you do get smoke in the cockpit, or the engine is not operating to the normal values. Well, in that case, we will take up our quick reference handbook, or we'll do our ECAM checklist, depending on which aircraft we're flying, and we will potentially, you know, maybe shut the engine down, maybe operate it on, on a lower thrust setting. We will do a plan, and then we will potentially come back and land at the same airport as we took off from. But in this case, these guys obviously did that. They did an evaluation of whether or not they had any failures. They came up with no, it actually looks like it's working properly. And it's very possible that there was no damage at all to this engine. They're very sturdy, these engines. So these guys, they flew on to Leipzig and when they got there, they, uh, they would have reported to their engineering department that they had a bird strike. The, the engineers would have come up and checked the engine out. If it's gone through the core, they will in most cases do what we call a boroscope inspection, which is that they get in with a camera and they check out all of the different uh, compressor stages to make sure that there are no dents to any of the compressor blades and things like that. But if they didn't find anything, then the aircraft would just continue to operate. Right? A bird strike is something that happens quite often, actually, and in most of the cases, it doesn't lead to any real damage to the engine. So that's it, guys. Uh, that's what I wanted to cover in this video. I really appreciate that you guys tag me on social media when something like this happens, because I can do these kind of videos and explain things to you. Hopefully, that will make you feel a little bit better and a little bit more comfortable 
about flying. Um, if you are interested in seeing how we do a rejected takeoff inside of the cockpit, I highly recommend you to get the Mentor Aviation app. All right, the app is free to download, it's free to use. You can, you know, get, you will get a lot of news, you will get uh, forums, chat and stuff like that. But I also have a couple of paid uh, instructional videos inside of the app. Rejected takeoff and evacuation is one of them, but I highly recommend you, if you're interested in getting that kind of instruction, to get the all-in-one collection, right? That's over two hours of me instructing you and in things like how to set up a Boeing 737 from when it's cold and dark until it's ready to taxi, rejected takeoff and evacuation, engine failure after takeoff, TCAS maneuvers, and stuff like that. So if that's what you're interested in, go in, get the app, in any case, and then consider getting the all-in-one collection or just get this collection. That's it. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Right, guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then, check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye. Oh,